Hey everybody, Christy Titus here. I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Pursue the Wild Tips from the Wild. And today I want to do a dive into how I use Onyx Hunt to help me virtually scout for hunting season. Now, Onyx has made virtual scouting really simple. First of all, we're going to start with what Onyx is super famous for, which is identifying landowner information. So as you can see here in this area, I've got zoomed in in Montana, there's a wide variety of different land ownership. All of that is readily available. If I do one more zoom in, I can actually get specific landowner information off of that and it will tell me who actually owns that land and more information from that. You can hunt with absolute confidence knowing that as you're navigating and walking around these uh, private land boundaries that you're not inadvertently trespassing. Once you've identified your hunt areas on your aerial map, on your PC, now you can start picking apart those needs that animals are going to have, which are all innately the same. They need food, they need water, and they need shelter or cover. So those things all depend on the time of year uh, and the season that you're hunting them. You can actually get a satellite view of your specific hunting area. So this is gonna really show you where those heavy forested pockets are versus these open areas that might host really good feeding spaces. To locate additional food sources, you may wanna consider turning on the historic wildfire layer on your Onyx map. So if you go into your map layers and go into the hunt layers, go in and select historic wildfires and as you can see when you select that it pops up now this actually will tell you the size of the wildfire and the year that it burned under your map layer system one of the layers you want to consider checking is the rmef layer and this is going to let you know any habitat improvements for that area that the rocky mountain elk foundation has participated in this can range from them going out and doing fence removal projects or reforestation projects or water improvement projects. So depending on the project, depending on the area, these RMEF icons can really feed you a lot of information on the type of work that was done in that area that may potentially aid in your public land hunt. If, for example, this was my hunting unit for the year, I'm gonna be looking for a couple of different things. How am I gonna get into this hunting unit? So I have access points here and I also have an access point down here if I need. Other than that, there's not a lot of access or trails. So this makes it a pretty good area because there is, as you can see, water. There's some pretty steep northwest facing slopes. Now where I would want to target on these is not in the steep parts. I'm gonna go more towards the benchy tops. And that's where I'm really gonna find those animals wanting to bed, bucks and bulls, north facing slopes, dropping down to water. And then I wanna zoom out, see where I can find some potential feeding areas. So I'm gonna to go to satellite mode here, and that's gonna help me identify those open spaces where they may feed. So, but these are gonna be really nice access points where animals are gonna be able to come in, do some feeding, and have a lot of access to security in this heavier timber, and also be able to drop down in water. Now your access is right here. So if, for example, I was coming in in an evening, I'm going to assume that my thermals are gonna be coming up, if I'm going to make the assumption that, that my animals are bedding on this north facing slope, thermals are going to come up, I might use this as my access point and come in above them. If it's in the morning, I might want to do my access point on this side over here, drop in and cut them off on their way to their bedding area, or hopefully catch them out feeding at all in the morning. So one of the things I'm going to look for on this also is where can I get in and do some glassing without putting my boots on the ground and disrupting this area. So looking at this, there's a couple pretty easy access points to look over in here. Now you're probably not gonna see a lot on this particular unit because the forest is so heavy. So this might be an opportunity for me to do a little bit of um, scouting. If I hike in on this trail here, sit on this glassing bridge here, hopefully they'll give me an opportunity somewhere in here, perhaps in this meadow uh, or this thin area here to be able to see some of these cuts down below. Going between the topo and satellite view gives you the opportunity to really read these contour lines. 
you can find out where things start flattening out and creating some benches versus where things are super steep. And then also getting that view of where you're gonna have some open feeding areas. Being able to flip between the two is great, but then there's also the hybrid view, which kind of gives you the best of both worlds. What I encourage all of you to do is really get in here and check out your hunt specific layers for the state that you're hunting. Turn on anything that you think is going to be uh, important. So government lands, your hunting districts, anywhere you're going to find possible access, block management, restricted areas. There are so many layers to choose from on here uh, that really will help you identify those habitat improvement projects, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, um, your, your burn history so you can find out where some good feeding areas are. All of that is interactive on here. You can turn these layers on, you can turn them off. If you guys are like me, you have become completely reliant for Onyx Hunt, not only for navigation, but for your scouting plans as well. And if you aren't familiar with Onyx Hunt, I encourage you get on your smartphone, download the app today and start your free trial.